Hello. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be talking about hypothesis testing and more generally the concept of representing the uncertainty in our estimates. Uh, so first of all, when we're doing econometrics, we have this idea that there's this true model out there that we are trying to get information about. We think that there's some sort of theory that we have about the way that the world works, some sort of laws that are guiding the processes that actually lead to us observing the data, right? If the price goes up, quantity demanded goes down. That's going to be part of the underlying law if we were looking at some sort of supply and demand system. Uh, or things like as incentives for something get better, more people are more likely to do it. So we might you know, go from there to get some hypotheses about how uh, unemployment insurance works or, or how uh, education works or how uh, certain welfare programs work. All sorts of things. We have some sort of theory that we're trying to learn about and we have this idea that we can think about what the true model is. But we don't actually get to see the true model. All we can see is the actual data that we have and we can generate an estimate on the basis of that we can assume that that true model is true to figure out some of the parameters of that model. So if we think that as price goes up, quantity demand goes down, great, that's our true model, but we want to know how much does it go down. And that's the thing that we're trying to estimate, the reason why we're trying to get any data in at all. Theory in general won't tell you that much about how big certain effects are. So we have this idea that we want to learn about the true model. Uh, let's say here's a true model that we have. Let's say that your wage is based on how tall you are. The taller you are, the more you get paid. Uh, and then also there's some error term that's unrelated to your height. So if, if we assume that this is the true model, you can already probably imagine some problems with it, but let's imagine that it's true for a second. If we did an estimate, uh, of, we, got, we gathered some data and we did an estimate of this model, we wouldn't have an endogeneity problem, right? Because there's, it, we've, we've assumed here that there's no relationship between height and the error term, but we would still have sampling error. We'd still have a sampling distribution uh, for our estimator, and that could lead to us getting an estimate that doesn't make any sense. So what we actually see is data. We gather some data, we see what we see in the data, uh, but that's not quite enough. We need to take that data and perform some sort of calculation on it, right? If that's our true model, if we think that there is a positive, if there's a linear relationship between your height and your wage, then we would probably run an ordinary least squares regression. Uh, and that would be our calculation. We would take our data and we would calculate out the ordinary least squares uh, model. And that the, the slope that we get from our ordinary least squares calculation, that would be our estimate of the true beta one in our, uh, our true model, right? We're trying to estimate what that beta one is. We wanna know what the effect of height on wage is. So in order to estimate that, uh, we use our ordinary least squares model. Uh, and hopefully, if we're doing it right, uh, then the estimate that we get will tell us something about the true model. Uh, and if we assume that there's no endogeneity problems, then on average, we might well get uh, the, true, the true beta one that we're looking for, but we would still have sampling variation. So what can we do to reasonably and you know, honestly represent the fact that we don't know exactly what the truth is, that we have some sort of uncertainty about what the truth is based on the fact that we only have one sample of data. You know, we don't have an infinite number of observations as you would, you would, you would expect in order to, uh, to get that true value. So what can we do? Well, we need to think about the sampling variation of our estimate. We talked about this a bit last time. Every time you pull a sample of data and you calculate your estimate, it's gonna vary a little bit, uh, simply because you are pulling a random sample of the data. You're not getting all the data, so sometimes you're gonna get a sample that looks a little bit different than, a different than another time that you might get the data, right? Your data is a random variable, and so therefore your calculation is random. It's gonna vary a little bit across samples, and so therefore your estimate uh, of the true beta uh, is going to vary across samples as well. Even though the true, the actual true beta does not vary across samples at all, uh, it is the truth, all right? So given that we have a certain true value, we can, if I tell you what the true value is, we can sample again and again with different uh, samples and we would still get different estimates. And if we happen to get a number that's say up here, right? We wouldn't know that this is far above the true value, right? All we can see is this one observation. And from there, we don't necessarily know uh, how far away from the truth we are, because we only have this one point. If you have this one point, you can't see the whole distribution, uh, then you might come to some erroneous conclusions. So what can we learn based on our one sample? So we need to think about what the sampling variation is and how we can handle it. Uh, so let's take uh, this example here where we have the true data. And so I've created some true data here. I can tell you uh, that the true model is, and I know that it's the true model because I created it myself, that uh, y is equal to three plus two times x plus some random noise, okay? And I do that, I get one sample from this true data generating process. I run my analysis and here's the estimate that I get, 2.22. Uh, so now keep in mind that we know that that's a little bit above the truth, but if you couldn't see this part, if we black this out and we can only see this regression, 
we wouldn't necessarily know if that we are above the true value. We just see the 2.22. Maybe the, maybe that is the true value. Maybe it's above, maybe it's below. We don't know. So what can we do? So it turns out that we can take what we know about the sampling distribution and use that to reasonably think about what we can learn about the truth based on what we actually see. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to think, okay, um, there's a couple different things that we can do here. One is that we can just characterize the sampling distribution itself and see how uncertain it is. We can say, based on what I know about the data, I think that the sampling distribution is going to be very wide. Uh, and, some inf and getting this particular estimate isn't going to tell me that much about what the true value is because I could get a lot of different stuff based on a single estimate. Or maybe the sampling distribution is going to be very narrow. And then so then when I get a particular estimate, I know quite a bit about what the true value is uh, because you know, I'm only going to get a certain range of values. Uh, so there's, there, I'm not going to get something very far away from the truth. So that's, and we'll talk a little bit in a little bit about how to characterize the variation in sampling. For now, let's think about the sampling distribution in the context of null hypothesis significance testing. So what this is, is that we are going to try to take that sampling distribution and we're going to use it to try, to try to eliminate certain values of the truth, right? We don't know what the truth is. It could be anything. But if we could uh, rule out certain ranges of possible truths, then we will narrow down what we think the truth might be. And that's the idea of null hypothesis significance testing. So what is this? So for null hypothesis significance testing, we need to think about the sampling distribution under the null. So what is that? So a null hypothesis is sort of a, a, a truth that we're going to test. We're going to say, hey, you know what? I think that maybe the true value of beta is 2, and I'm going to test whether or not that's true. And so in order to test whether that, or not that's true, I need to think, if this were true, if the truth were actually 2, what would the sampling distribution be? Uh, and if we're talking about an ordinary least squares coefficient, the sampling distribution is normal, and the mean of that normal is going to be the actual true value, and the standard deviation of that normal is going to be based on uh, the noise in the data. And if we do assume that it's true and say, okay, if it's actually two, here's the sort of distribution that I would expect to see. Here's a random distribution that I have when I just pull a couple random samples. Uh, and even though it's true, even though we know that it's two, if we are assuming that it's actually two, we would still get a lot of variation, right? That's what we were talking about before. And so our question is, is the estimate that we actually get so unlikely on this distribution that we can say that this is not true? Because right? what do we know so far? We know if this is the actual true value, if, we're if, we, if the null value that we assume is in fact true, we know what the sampling distribution is. We also know what estimate we actually got. Okay? So what we see is that we are under the assumption that the null is true, here's what we get. If what we got is very, 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 very unlikely to occur if the null is true, well, then one of these two things must be false, right? And we actually did get this estimate. That part's definitely true. So if one of them's false, it's got to be the null. So that's our idea. We look at the null distribution. We say if the estimate we actually got is too unlikely given the null distribution, then we can reject the null because we actually did get the estimate and they can't both be true. That's our idea. So what we're going to do, we're going to characterize the null distribution, the null sampling distribution of our estimator under the assumption that the null is true, and we're going to check how unlikely our estimate is.